Well, glory to God. Welcome to November 2020. Are y'all glad to start November in the house of the Lord this morning? Well, y'all look a chipper this morning like you got an extra hour of sleep. Amen. I don't know, some of y'all might be like Sister Garvey. She said, I just woke up at the same time anyway. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, you're in the house of the Lord. But somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Tomorrow, I pray God's anointing on this service. Let's, uh, let's worship Him with all our heart this morning and enter into what all He has for us today. Amen. God, we just love you. We thank you for who you are, Lord. And we ask that you just come and dwell in this place today, God. I ask that you just direct this service in the way that you would like it to be, Lord. Just keep your hand upon the pastors as they speak today, God, and give us direction as you would give us direction. We thank you for everything you have in store. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you turn and greet somebody this morning? Let us know if you're glad you're here to worship the Lord with you this morning. And let's sing this old song. Does anybody out there believe he's alive? Say, Jesus is alive. Oh, he's alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore.
going to change it up. We've got some plans up here. But man, we just uh, we want to just praise the Lord. Lift him up this morning. Just feel the need to just lift a voice of praise. So we're going to shift our plan here. And uh, we're going to go. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Take us higher and higher and higher. 
be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget men who died who gave that right to me. And I'll proudly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. I know I'm free And I won't forget The men who died To gave that right to me And I'll proudly stand up Next to you When the her still a day Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless The USA
Does the Lord be able to take time for prayer this morning? We we'll take these things to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's look around. Let's pray for those that are out today. God will just minister to them. Touch their lives and help them in the name of Jesus. We're going to take these to the Lord and turn in this morning. Let's do the Lord. Tracy and family, Edwin's family. God will just minister to them. To them, to them. Let's pray for Wes's dad. He had another stroke. He had a stroke uh, uh, some months ago and recovered well. And, uh, he had another one hit him another morning. And we're in agreement with, with, for Wes's dad. Uh, and God will just minister to him and raise him up and do what he wants to do with your dad. Let's also pray for Melody, spiritual woman. I don't really know any of these people. That's all right. God has entrusted us to pray for them. Amen. Amen. We're going to lift them up in faith and prayer this morning. Believe God to do what He can do. That's of course, we've been agreeing with prayer this morning. We've been praying for months. We fasted in September for 21 days. We've been upholding our nation as well as other things. And believing God to do work. So let's continue to be in prayer for our nation. The election will continue. God will be glorified. Amen voice of the righteous and speak and the truth will be held by us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don, is there anything else that I forgot? Seems like there's some meaning about that. I know there's other meaning. Sister Patty. Sister Patty, thank you. We need to pray for Sister Patty this morning. Possibly an infection in her body. And so let's pray for her. God, let's pray for you. Let's continue to pray for the waters. Is a, they need God's strength and help, wisdom and peace as they deal with the Jimmy Tom and all her physical situations. Pray for help and healing there. And I know there's many other needs this morning. If you know of other needs, you can say, Pastor, I would like to just have a, this need that's on my mind uh, brought forth in prayer with this prayer. Just, want to just look at your hands for the Lord right now. He knows. Everybody say, God knows. He knows. So let's take these things to the Lord. Would you stand with me this morning? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we're so thankful this morning. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you that we know who we believe in. God, we pray unto you, Father, you're the, you're the God that owns the cattle on all a thousand hills. You own it all, God. You even created us. So, Father, I thank you that we come to the, to the creator of the universe. We come to the one who, who has it all in his hands. Father, we thank you that you have given us the opportunity to lose some minds, bring things out, to stop things, plots of the enemy. Father, right now we lift up every need that has been brought before us. And so we lift it up to you. We bring it before you. We come boldly before your throne only by the grace and mercy of you, Jesus. So we bring these things to you. We lay them to your feet. We thank you, Father, that we trust you and we know that you will touch every issue. Father, we ask for healing in the bodies that need it. We come against sickness and disease. We, we rebuke and come against this old coronavirus and, and the damage it's done and, and, and the things that it's attacked. And I thank you, Father, we proclaim that we are overcoming, we're coming through. And in Jesus' name, we rebuke and push back this thing in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray every everyone be healed and has been afflicted right now. We pray that that healing virtue would sweep forth with your mighty power. Holy Spirit, push back. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Holy Spirit, push back. Father, we lift up those of our body that need physical healing this morning. We pray in Jesus' name they receive your touch, receive your healing. We pray for others, God, that aren't with us, that God, are, uh, Lord, have gone through struggles in their mind or their decisions, God. I pray in Jesus' name you'd help them this morning. Help them, strengthen them, Lord. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would just uh, do the miraculous for those that need it this morning. Father, we, we lift up God and uh, Wes's dad. We ask in Jesus' name to touch him where he is this morning. I pray that you touch that blood flow. We pray that you touch it. every part of the enemy's attack. And Father, I pray that God, there will be a holy communication in this hour between you and him. I pray in the name of Jesus that he would experience your presence. And God, we ask for a miracle that you raise him up in the name of Jesus. 
We pray you touch Sister Patty where she is. Do your work. Do a miracle, Lord. I pray that you just touch her and heal her completely right down in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, for Sandy. We ask the Lord to heal her. Give the Lord her strength this morning. We pray for Edna's family, God. We pray for, for Linda Linda's family, God. We, we pray for all those that are going through things right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we ask you to intervene by your mighty hand and bring about all the We thank you this morning. Jesus, through you, we have victory. We have forgiveness of sins. We have healing. And we have direction. And so we claim it this morning. Father, we ask you to save our lost loved ones. We ask you to bring back the backsliders. We ask you, Lord, to bring in those that don't know you. And God, we just give you the glory, give you the praise, and give you the honor for it all. We thank you for this. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody's there. Amen. 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 Glory, God. Glory, God. Glory, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I think it's, isn't it amazing how the Spirit of God works? You know, sometimes I'll be praying. I just feel, feel uh, just an unction spirit. I have to just proclaim something out loud. But man, it's, it's almost like a just a soothing of the spirit of God this morning. It's just a, a, a still small voice. You know, we praised Him loudly a while ago. It's like I don't know about you, but I feel an assurance of God this morning. Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. I'm assured that when we take to Him, He's applying His hand to us. And I'm assured this morning. That nothing can remain unchanged when God puts his hands in it. Amen. You're proof of that. You're proof of that. I'm proof of that. I'm not the same as I used to be. Anybody else can hear that? We need it. Hallelujah. What God touches. What God touches. What God touches. Cannot be unchanged. Hallelujah. Thank you for your Give him one more applause. Glory to God. Glory to your mighty name, Lord. We love you. We say this before you say it. Thank you, God, for hearing and answering prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be saved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we're going to give you an opportunity to give this morning. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving. May God just bless you for all that you're doing to keep the work of God going forth on the earth. How many of y'all know that He uses us? He uses us as a vehicle to, to be obedient to His Word, to, to keep the Word going forward. So I'm thankful. Thank you so much for obeying the Lord and tithes and offerings. And I know God is measuring back to you like His Word says, good measure. For how many of y'all, God doesn't have a bad measure. Amen. You let God get in your finances. He's got a good measure. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Amen. That's what God wants you. So thank you for your giving. May God bless you for what you've done and what you're about to do. So will you take whatever represents you give in your hand, hold it up, let's say, speak a blessing over it, pray over it, and give it this morning. Say this with me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you in your house today for blessing my life, for giving me provision, for giving me the source, the job, the provision that I have for my life. It represents hours, labors, efforts of my life. So Lord, I give this portion back to you today. I plant it in the house of God and in the kingdom of God. I give it cheerfully, rejoicing, and knowing that as I plant it today, it will bring forth fruit in this house, in the kingdom, and my house. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing on this seat. In Jesus' name. Now come on and give us the Lord to lead you this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
a spiritual thing. That's what we're here. But I just want to make one more appeal from this final Sunday before our election. I want to just encourage everyone, every believer, you've been given the, the glorious freedom and right to vote in this nation. And I believe it is our obligation as Christians to let our voice be heard. Yes. Amen. Jesus yes. said, Say unto this mountain, be thou removed, thou cast into the sea. One of the greatest ways we have to say is to speak our voice. And this land is with our vote. Yes. So vote. Yes. If you don't know how to vote, let me show you my voter's guide. Yes. <laughs> vote who will stand mostly with this book. Right. Amen. Don't vote personalities. If we were voting personalities, it'd be a hard decision. Right. It's just a fact. And I'm not voting personality. I'm voting for platform and truth and righteousness and those that stand most likely. Yes. Yes. So just an encouragement. Let your voice be heard. Let's pray. Let's vote. And believe God for the outcome. Amen. 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 Let's close the Bible. We we'll find myself again. Luke chapter. Uh, let's go to five. <laughs> Luke chapter five. Y'all there? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so glad y'all in church today. Amen. 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 We all are glad you're here. Amen. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Now, this is also the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee was called by four different names in the Word of God. It's also the Sea of Galilee. And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, in thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, everybody say, when they had done this, <laughs> they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. And their net break. And they beckon unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they could give us. Glory. How many of y'all like some overflowing blessings like that? <laughs> Not God give us something to bring in. God, how are we going to get all this in? <laughs> when Peter, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees. Saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And he was astonished at all that were with him at the drought of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Hallelujah. Go back up to verse 3. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out from the land and sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning for your word. I thank you, God. We know your word is true. Jesus you and the Word are one and the same. You are the flesh, the, the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld your glory, the glory of the only begotten, the Father full of grace and glory. I thank you, Jesus, that as we study this Word, we study your character. We study you. So I thank you, Jesus. We know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. So, Father, I pray that, God, as we look at this great story in the Word of God this morning, that you would let the truth of your personality, the truth of, of your spirit just explode within us as we see your heart, Jesus. God, let us be touched today and knowing what kind of Lord we serve. And let us be motivated to hear every word that the Spirit would speak to us. Let us hear, Lord, the voice 
by how the words and we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody say Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Uh, ushers go, we'll just keep an eye on the temperature. I'm, I'm getting a good little warm, so we had the heat on earlier, so let's adjust that to get it cooled down a little bit. Amen. Verse 3. And he entered into one of, one of the ships of Simon's, prayed them to be thrust out a little bit from land. He sat down and taught the people. I like the way that another version says this, verse 3, it says, sitting there, using the boat for a pulpit, he taught the crowd. Amen. Amen. Amen? I want to share with you just a few minutes today. My title today is, I Thought I Bought a Boat. <laughs> Everybody say, I thought I bought a boat. <laughs> How many of y'all know that we can get things in our life we think is for one purpose. Oh, but down the road, we find out God had designed that it was for a whole other purpose. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Peter thought he had a boat. Oh, but it became much more than a boat on this day. Now think about the history of this boat that belonged to Simon, and, and we're going to call him Peter. I'm going to call him Peter because at this point, Jesus had not changed his name to Peter yet. Uh, he was still Simon. And uh, so uh, at first it was Simon. One part it says Simon Peter here, but, but I'll probably refer to him as Peter through this. But Peter had this boat. Now we don't know, the Bible doesn't tell us how he went about getting this boat. We know he's in the fishing business. We know if he owned his own boat, he had to have some level of success. Amen? Amen. So he knew what he was doing. And who knows? He may have saved for years working for somebody else to be able to buy this boat. And he thought, I finally got the tool I need to have success for my family. And, and I'm using this. And God's blessed me with this. And I say that, you know, we, we sometimes think of Simon Peter and and Andrew's brother, James and John, are old stinky, messy fishermen, and they probably did smell pretty bad. But, but you know, we think of them as, as just dirty, rotten sinners. We're going we're to find out that they regularly attended the synagogue. We see them, uh, one of the disciples, you remember when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, and two of the, two, two of the followers came up and, and asked about Jesus, and, and John pointed to Jesus, and he said, he said, uh, uh, I must decrease, he may increase, and he pointed to Jesus, and he said, he said, he's the one that has the words of life, you follow him. Andrew was one of those, and it says Andrew went and told Simon, his brother, about Jesus. The other guy that was with him was John, and John and James were partners with Peter and Andrew. Amen. And they worked in the fishing business together. That's why that other boat they beckoned, I'm sure it was John and, and James's boat, sons of Zebedee, hauling in that together. But, but this, this boat represented, man, the achievement, of what, the tool he needed to be successful. All the visions and dreams of his life were in that boat. It could have been a boat handed down from his, from his dad or, or someone. And, and if it was, it became a a treasure to him. You know, as I think back about that and the, the things that are that we have or God's blessed us with, even in the way of career, our talents, our abilities, I'm telling you, you've been given those things for a purpose. Yes, yes it's to be a blessing in your life, but I wonder how many times, if we'd really take a look at it, that God has given us a position or a career, or a talent, or an ability that he's given to us that we might offer it back to him as a pulpit, as a platform for the word of Jesus to go for. Amen. 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 All of Peter's vision, that boat was tied up his career, his finances, his work. Everything Peter thought about his future was tied up in that boat. Because I, I guarantee you, uh, Peter... Peter didn't have any vision of being a disciple. He had a vision of being a successful fisherman that happened to have happened to cross Jesus in his life. And he knew that this man had words of life. He had visually seen the miracles of God working in his life before this point. But Peter probably thought, thank you God for letting me be exposed to this. It's affected my life. 
and it's changing my life. But I guarantee you, Peter had no idea what plans God had for him. Amen. But this day represented the change and the turnaround in not only Peter's life, but Andrew's and James and John. For this day, they would receive their call. This day, they would hear what Jesus had planned for them. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Aren't you glad Jesus has plans for you? Look at somebody and say, Jesus has got plans for you. Bigger than what you thought. Amen. Amen. I looked up the word pulpit because in that other version I saw the word pulpit and it was interesting to me. The word pulpit had two definitions by it. The first one was a raised platform in the church or chapel in which the minister delivers a sermon. We all know that's pulpit. But it had a number two definition. I never knew. Maybe if you're a boat person, you knew this. But the second definition of pulpit is a raised platform in the bow of a fishing boat or a wedding. So the spot Jesus was sharing was already made for what he was going to be doing with it. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus stepped in this boat. The crowd was pressing him, and he began to teach from the, the sea. But what impressed me about this story was because Peter allowed what he had to become a platform for Jesus. Jesus showed him gratitude, and Jesus blessed him for what he had done for him. I want to tell you, if you'll make available what's been given to you, God will make sure that he astounds you with what he gives back to you. Would somebody say amen, amen. and amen. amen. Now I want, just, I want to just look at this just a little bit and look at Peter's experience before this with Jesus. So go back to Luke chapter 4 now. Luke chapter 4, starting with verse 16. I'll give you just a second. I've got to get the ring out of here. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now look what happened before that day. Over chapter 4, go over to verse 16, and it says this. Now this was after Jesus went to the, don't know, he was baptizing John. He immediately, the Bible says, the Spirit uh, drove him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He went through that temptation of, in the wilderness of the devil. How many of y'all remember how Jesus defeated the devil? Every time he said what? It is written. Amen. By the word of God. Amen. It is written. Everybody say, it is written. It is written. Now, when Jesus, he came out of that temptation in the wilderness, what did he do? He did what everybody would do when you come through a struggle. I don't know about you, but when I go through a fight, next thing I want, I want to go home and be with family. Amen. So start reading verse 16. And he came to Nazareth. Where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. I want to tell you, it ought to be your habit to be in church. Yes. It was a habit. His custom was, his pattern was to be in church. Yes. Amen? Amen. So what church did we get into heaven? Well, you're absolutely right. Jesus gets you to heaven. But church is what people that love Jesus do. Amen? Amen? And God, let me tell you, I know some of y'all have work situations or whatever, I know that, but, but let me tell you, if you'll make the priority of serving God and serving His house a priority, God tends to help you work out all that other stuff. Amen? Amen, Amen Drew? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Man, I tell you what I like seeing Drew here every Sunday. I'll take it from Jesus' name. I'll do it. So you have to work through work situations. Situation, there'll always be something come up in your life. The devil makes sure that, that you have to make a choice whether to put the house of God or that more important. Amen. Thank you for making the house of God important today. Everybody say, I made a good decision. I'm in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. But Jesus came to his own, own uh, uh, town, this town he grew up in, Nazareth. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up for a read in verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah is what it was. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, 
to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say to them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your, in your ears. How many of y'all know Jesus was reading out of Isaiah and he was reading about himself? He had come to bring deliverance to the captives. He had come to give the good news. He had come. He was proclaiming to his hometown. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And I just want to stop and say this. If you're in the need of a touch from Jesus, that the, the anointing of the Lord would break the yoke of bondage, to heal a broken heart, to have good news to the poor, I want to tell you that this day, today, November the 1st of 2020, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears if you will receive it from Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And all bear him witness and wonder at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. But listen to this. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? Everybody say, Familiarity. And he said unto them, You will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Go to verse 28. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill wherein their, their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. How many of y'all know not all of your family and friends are going to like it when you start speaking the things of God. Amen. They're going to shut you up any way they can. Amen. But I got good news for you. Jesus didn't stop talking. He continued to speak the word. This is what it said. But he passing through the midst of them went his way and came down to Capernaum. That's the city where Peter and Andrew and James and John lived. He came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath day. Now, don't you listen to how different the people of Capernaum see. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of unclean devil cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee. Thou art the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. I want you to stop right there and say this. Isn't it sad that all the devils in hell know who Jesus is, but men will refuse him? Amen. Amen. Jesus, it was not Jesus. He knew if, if, if it was revealed to him that he was truly the Son of God at that point, People would, would not have reacted. They would have gone, got ahead of schedule. They would have tried to exalt him up as the king at that moment. And he would not have been able to fulfill his role of paying the price for sin upon the cross. And so he shut up every devil that tried to come. You say, well, well, that's a powerful thing. Even the devil is saying he's king. But I want to tell you, the timing of God is important. How many of y'all know the timing of God is important? Thanksgiving Day, you may be standing with family. And you're standing with somebody you know needs God. And you want to love them and you want to minister to them and you want to start preaching to them. And it may be the time and it may not. Because Jesus knows when the right time to reveal things is. And we have to be responsive to the Spirit. Maybe it's time to just love them. Amen? There's a time for a bold rebuke. There's a time for challenging with the Word of God. But I want to tell you, all the time is a time to love and show the compassion of Jesus Christ. Amen. Would somebody say amen? amen? Pray for them. Love them. Show them that they're special to you. No matter if they see things the way you do or not. I want to tell you, love will make a way for the Word of God to come forth. Amen. When I say love, I'm saying things I didn't even know I'd get into this morning. But let me tell you, when I say love, I'm not saying about accept everything that's going on. Love is not the acceptance of all things. But love is the presentation and acceptance of truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. But love them anyway. 
Amen. Everybody say, love them anyway. Do good to them. Pray for those who despitefully use you, persecute you. Say all manner of evil against you. That's what the Word of God says. I know you don't like me bringing that one up, but how many of y'all know it's in the Word of God? Yeah. Amen. Everybody say, love wins. Listen, Jesus just gets to, to Andrew and Simon, John and James' hometown here in Capernaum. Let's see what happens here. And Jesus rebuked him, 35, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. When the devil was thrown into, had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. And they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word. I like that. What a word. I like it when we leave church and say, What a word. Amen. Hallelujah. We know we've heard from God. I'm glad you're not depending on me to get you a word of God. I want to deliver a word of God to you. But I don't want you to just hear my voice. I want you to hear God's voice. Amen. That's why almost every time I preach, I pray, Lord, I want to hear the voice behind the words. That you can walk out of here saying, Boy, God spoke to us. What a word. Amen. 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 What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place in the country round about. And he arose out of the synagogue. And entered into Simon's house. This is what he's in. Now listen, that tells you something. Simon was in church that day. This was on the Sabbath. On the Jewish, on the Jewish Sabbath, how many of y'all know it was a Sabbath? We worship today on Sunday. Why? Because that was the day Jesus was rose from the dead. And that's the most celebrated day we can possibly have. So that's why we worship on Sunday, the first day of the week now. But on the Jewish way of doing things, they worship on Saturday, Sabbath day. Amen? So this was equivalent to after church on Sunday lunch. Amen? So Peter, Peter had already met Jesus because it's recorded in John that Andrew introduced Peter to Jesus. And now Jesus had come preaching in his hometown. Peter showed up for that. The words of God moved forth my child. He saw the, the unclean spirit cast out the man. And so it may have been Andrew that introduced Peter to Jesus, but Andrew, I mean, Peter, he was that boisterous one. You know, he was one that they both ran into the tomb. Him and John, John beat him there, and Peter said, Yeah, you know, and he went in the tomb. Peter was the one that walked on water. Peter was the one that said, When Jesus said, I'm going to die, be crucified the next three days later, and Peter said, Oh, I'll beg you not, Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure nobody arrests you. Nobody takes you down. You know what Jesus said to him? Get thee behind me. Because Jesus was appointed. Peter was boisterous. And so it was Peter that, that made his way through the crowd when Jesus at the synagogue and the service was over. He said, Jesus, I'd like for you to come to my house for lunch. Amen? So Jesus went to Simon's house after lunch on the Sabbath day. Look here, read me verse 38. And Simon's wife's mother had, was taken with a great fever. And they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she rose up and ministered unto him. Isn't that something? Come to Simon's house. And in the conversation, Simon mentions, hey, you know, I want you to enjoy her. Got to be quiet the mother-in-law. She's sick with other women. And so she, they, had just, they had seen Jesus heard his words, saw what he did with the, the spirits that tried to invade the service and what Jesus did. And they said, Jesus, would you mind praying for him? And Jesus just went in there and the Bible says, in this verse it said he stood over her, another, another uh, gospel that says that he touched her and she immediately, a fever immediately broke. Everybody say it immediately broke. Immediately. And she got up and started cooking lunch. She got up, mother in law started getting, got up and cooking lunch. Amen? They probably had fish. I'm not sure what was on the menu that day. Chances are they had fish that day. Amen? Now when the sun was setting, this is he's at Peter's house for Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick and with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out, and saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. And when it was day, y'all hear that? When it was day, Jesus' lunch visit turned into an all-night miracle service at Peter's house. Hallelujah. Amen? 
Hallelujah. Why? Because Peter invited him to his house. How many of y'all ought to think we ought to make Jesus welcome in our house? Yeah. Amen. Uh, I forget what the song was called. There was a song back in the 70s talking about if Jesus came to your house, would you go hide a bunch of magazines and, and uh, change your TV thing and do all this stuff? You know, uh, man, if Jesus walked in your house today, would you have to change anything? Before he walked through. Or is he welcome? Is he there right now? Amen. Let Jesus in your house. Because you never know when lunch will turn into an all night miracle service. He was there all night long. Everybody in town came to Peter's house. Getting healed. Devil getting cast out. All the way till the sun came up. What a, day, what a night. Did somebody say that's the Jesus I serve. And when it was day. He departed and went into a desert place. How I many of y'all know Jesus was fully God, but he was fully man? He had to have a break. Amen? He went into a desert place, and the people sought him and came unto him and stayed with him, and he, that he should, and, and stayed him that he should not depart. He said, Jesus, don't leave us. We, we want to be with you. How I many of y'all remember how you felt when you first got saved? Oh, man, you just want to hang out with Jesus all the time. I hope that you're so in love with Jesus even if you've been serving for 50 years that you still feel the same way. Amen. Stir up. Remember that first love you had. And it tells us in everybody, stir it back up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 33. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. For therefore am I sent. And he preached in the synagogue, synagogues of Galilee. So Jesus began to preach in the synagogue of Galilee. Now, the first verse there, chapter 5, that we started with, says, and it came to pass. That means a little time went by. We don't know how much time, but here's Peter. His experience with Jesus was Andrew had introduced him to from the from John's version of the gospel. We know the, the other two gospels, It was they just made a short a short statement that Jesus found him on the sea, called out to him and said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. But Luke here gives us a lot more details. So Simon had had an experience of meeting Jesus. He came to his town to preach. He went to the synagogue, heard him preach, was moved. He asked him to come to his house, healed his mother-in-law, and saw Jesus perform miracles all night, healing people, people that were sick and casting out devils. I'm telling you, Jesus had already made an impression in Peter's life. And I'm sure every day when he went to work with his brother, James and John, fishing, he had the words of Jesus and what Jesus had done stirring in his heart. But then one day, Jesus came back into town and he comes on the shore of Galilee there in Capernaum. They had been fishing all night. The, uh, one version says that James and John were still in the boat and they, they were coming to shore. And, and, but, but anyway, they were cleaning their nets. They were done. They were tired. They were fixing to put up everything. They had toil all night and caught nothing. We know that by the word. And here comes Jesus. And it's not only Jesus. Y'all remember they said the people there, verse 1, the people pressed upon him. They wanted to get near him. Amen. And Jesus saw Simon, Peter over there. He recognized him, and Peter certainly recognized Jesus. Because Jesus is the only one that comes into town with 5,000 people following him. Amen. Amen. And so, Jesus, I don't know how it happened. I can picture Jesus kind of making motion to the boat, and Simon over here cleaning the nets, and Simon to help, whatever, whatever you need. How many of y'all know when, when Jesus makes a motion to, to use something of yours, that we should say, it's yours, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus steps in the boat. I want you to read, read it with me again. Verse 3. And he entered into one of the ships that was Simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. He sat down and talked to people out of the ship. You know, I believe as Peter was over here washing his net, Jesus was in his boat speaking the word of God. Peter might have been washing stuff out of his net, but he was glued to everything that Jesus was saying. And it was stirring him. And it was ministering him. How many of y'all know when you, when you realize and you've allowed Jesus to enter your house, stir some things up, 
And all of a sudden, his words carry weight in your life. See, there's some people, they would not they would not have, even with an extra hour of sleep, they didn't care about coming to church this morning. Why? Because they knew words would go forth that might challenge them. Amen. That's why there's empty seats around many of you this morning. But thank God for you that have fallen in love with his words. Amen. And you realize that his words are not just words of sound that go in your ears. Amen. But they are words of life Amen. that give you life and change your direction. Yes, and at any moment in time could change the whole course of your life. Yes, Amen. Amen. Peter gave a platform to Jesus. And as Jesus spoke the word, it stirred the heart of Peter. Amen. Jesus had been in his house. They knew one another, but this was the day when they would receive their calling. Now listen to this, about this miracle drought of fish here. And when he had left speaking, it doesn't tell us anything that Jesus said, but how many of y'all know it had to be a good one? Man. Hey, I'd love to be there for that one. When Jesus ended speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets for drive. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. He said, look, this is Peter. He knows the fishing on that sea. He knows that lake well. Would somebody say amen? amen. Peter knew all the facts I'm about to give you about the Sea of Galilee. He knew the Sea of Galilee was 60 miles north of Jerusalem. He knew it was 13 miles long. He knew it was 8 miles wide. He had, fin he had fished every foot of it, I imagine. He knew that it was 80 foot deep in some places, 160 foot deep in other places. It was surrounded by steep cliffs and mountains on three sides, except for the south side, causing there to be times of cold wind rushing down those mountains, causing turbulent storms to kick up at any moment on this sea. Peter knew it well. He had fished it all these days. He had his boat on it daily going out to make a living for his family. He knew this was not a good fishing day. He had been out there all night with Andrew, James, and John. But oh, I love what Peter said. To answer him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Say those words with me. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, at thy word. How many of y'all know this is why we need to keep going our net? I'm believing for a mighty drought of men and women to be called. In this year, whatever years we have left to come, I'm believing for there to be a fast catch one of these days. And all I know to do until Jesus calls it is to keep throwing the net. Why do I show up every Sunday? And sometimes I'll preach to close to 100, and sometimes I'll preach closer to 30 or 40. Or I don't know, but I know this, that if Jesus said throw the net out, we keep throwing the net out. Because one of these days, we're going to throw the net out, and it's going to be more than we can call it before you. Or somebody say what Jesus has told you to do. Yes. Even if it seems like it's not working. Amen. Don't stop. Peter said, Lord, he could have, you know, I know Peter, I could have, I could have almost heard him kick you into a real rant. And now, Jesus, I know this lake better than anybody around. I know the sea of Galilee. And I'm telling you, the fish ain't biting today. That's what his flesh Wanted to say. But there was something going on in Peter. It was not his flesh that had been stirred by Jesus. You know what was happening? I saw this guy raise up my mother in law and break her feet. I heard his word. I heard him rebuke the devil. I saw him in my very house heal disease after disease, stay up all night long, and none of us got sleepy because we were so amazed at the miracles. And so he made a decision. He said, Lord, I'm telling you, we caught nothing all night. 
we're tired, we're sleepy, we're ready to go home. But if you're saying do it, he had just heard him preach. How many of y'all know that had started up? Nevertheless, in thy word, I'm going to do it. Boy, they experienced the glories of God. And when they had done this, verse 6 again, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes with their nets break. They beckoned unto their partners that were in the other ship. They were all come to help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. This is what I want you to see. That Peter saw it. Peter saw it. Jesus showed in this miracle that his dominion was in the seas and on the seas. In the seas and on dry land. He was over the wealth of the seas and later on he would display that he was over the waves of the sea. How many of y'all are thankful that you know the creator and the one that's power over all things? You know what I think it's neat about this miracle? I, I, that Jesus had just finished preaching. I believe that there were still people lingering on the shore. You know, they had come to Jesus and said, don't leave us there. They were curious where he was going. So they were on the shore watching this as they pushed out the boat, watching where Jesus was heading, and probably wondering, hey, if we, he heads that way, if he heads over toward Bethsaida, we're going that way or, or wherever. And so he was watching to see where they would go. And from the shore, people began to see what was happening as they began to bring all these fish in. I'm telling you, your miracle that comes from you giving Jesus a platform in your life will affect more than you. Amen? God will make it obvious to other people. But this is what I want you to hear more than anything else this morning. When Peter saw the miracle, it was an obvious miracle. It was not just a good, good catch. For, for the Sea of Galilee, I'm telling you, it was a miraculous catch. It was something that was so miraculous. Look, again, Peter had heard his words, saw the devils cast out, saw people healed, saw his own mother-in-law healed, and none of those things brought Peter to his knees till this happened. Man. But when Peter saw the miracle of the fish caught, in that degree, oh, I love this, It says when Peter, Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. How many of y'all know Peter wasn't really wanting Jesus to leave? But what happened was when he saw the miracle of Jesus to that degree, and how many of y'all know Jesus will give you a miracle in the area where it will touch you the most? Amen. God knew how much Peter had worked and just dreamed of a day half that good. I don't know how much that was. I'd venture to say they might have caught a year's worth of salary in that one case that day. But whatever it was, it, it astonished Peter. You can see in the next, next verse, he was astonished at it. So much that this miracle caused him to fall down on his, on his face before Jesus at his knees and say, Lord, depart from me because I'm a sinful man. What did Peter do? Peter took a look inside. Jesus' miracles caused him to take a look inside and realize that, that, oh, in your presence, Lord, I will never be worthy to be. Amen. How many of y'all know until we get to that point, we'll never be able to hear the true God, call of God for our life? Peter had to get to the end of himself and see what he wasn't. He was unholy before the Lord. Even though he went to church, invited him to his house, did all the things religiously, some seems like that he needed to do, but it didn't hit his heart till he saw all these fish caught and he fell to Jesus' feet. Look at his words again. And he said, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished. And all that were with him, in other words, Andrew, Peter, I mean, Andrew, James, and John. He was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought of fishes which they had. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, henceforth thou shalt catch men. 
See, when Peter said, I'm a sinful man, and he fell before the Lord, that was, that was Peter's language of humility and self-denial. How many of y'all know we've got to find our, our language of humility before the Lord? Amen. He was willing to take a look at himself. And he saw Jesus. Listen, I want you to hear this. He saw that Jesus, the Son of God, reacted in authority, but also was willing to express his love and appreciation. Jesus was thankful. You know why he did that for Peter? Because Peter had invited him to his house. Now he's given him his boat for his platform. Peter made available to him the things that were brought into Peter's life. I can't, Peter, Peter I, you know, Peter's like, God, I can't, I can't give you a bunch of money, but I can invite you to lunch. And if you need my boat, yeah. And because Peter had made available what he had, oh, now Jesus made available what he had. Amen? And Jesus wanted to express to him. He had already shown his authority to him. Peter had already really saw his authority work. But now he was expressing to Peter, Peter, I love you, and I want to thank you for letting me use your boat. And so I got a gift for you. Jesus was thankful. Amen? How many of y'all think we ought to be thankful? Amen. Yes, thankful to God. Jesus was also thankful to the Father. Do you remember when he was praying at the tomb of Lazarus? Jesus said, Father, I thank you. I thank you that you've heard me and you always. Heard. Jesus was thankful to the Father, but Jesus was not so lifted up in the flesh, in, his, or in the natural, in himself, that he was afraid to be thankful to man. Amen. Aren't you glad? Amen. Hallelujah. So he chose to bless him. Hallelujah. Little did they know through all this that these men would become the closest men to Jesus in the 33 and a half years that he walked upon the earth. The next three years, these men would see the blind eyes, the, the lame to walk, miracle after miracle as Jesus walked and did the works of God, and they were stirred and touched. And it all began, why? Because somebody, somebody was willing to give Jesus a platform in their life. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. I love that Jesus said, fear not, and henceforth thou shalt catch me. And I, I love Matthew's version of this. Oh, I almost panicked. Oh, I, my watch said 1240. Please somebody tell me it's 11. <laughs> Praise God. Still got an hour and a half to preach. <laughs> Just kidding. Hallelujah. I love the way Matthew recorded this. Matthew 4 21, he said this. He said unto Simon, Thou shalt both see and do greater things than these. Fear not, from now on you shall catch men. Hallelujah. When they had brought their ship to land, they forsook all and followed him. God, when we get a true glimpse of what Jesus can do, everything we have worked for, everything that we thought was the ultimate in the natural becomes secondary when we hear the call of God. Amen. And why did they hear it? Because they positioned themselves for him. Amen. Amen. They had always dreamed of a catch like this one. Yet when they came to shore, they, they forsook all. And they followed Jesus. In their greatest moment, this is in their greatest moment of prosperity and increase and in riches, it was not enough to get their eyes off of their encounter with Jesus. So i got a question for you today. What is it that you have been given in your life that can be a platform for him? You may have think you bought a boat, but what you really got is a place to glorify God. Amen. And I see it throughout my life, and sometimes I've been faithful with it, and sometimes not. I always wanted horses. You know, I always wanted to be a cowboy. I come from a country family, and, 
and uh, they had Lynn and Glenn and Mom and Dad, they had horses in the early years. By the time I got born, we was living in town. But man, they had a country heart about them, and I, so I caught that, and I always wanted to be a cowboy. And so, man, come teenager time, my brother said, Romeo, I wanted to Romeo. Got into bull riding, did that for six and a half years. And then, you know, always wanted my own horses. Finally got my own horses. When, when me and Donna got horses, I thought, man, I, man, this is, thank you, God, for blessing me. I thought, man, this is going to be good for me. But what I didn't realize, when God put those horses in my hands, all the opportunities I've had to be riding through the woods with people, sharing Jesus with them, talking to them about the Lord. And I thought, man, Lord, I thought you gave these horses to me for me, and you did, but yet you've given it to me as a platform. My years in the bull ride, I've been looking out back on this, and for, for 17 years and 20 years of this church's existence, we were a cowboy church. We still got our cowboy flavor around here. Huh. Amen. But why is that? Because God blessed me with some things, and it became a platform Amen. to share the gospel. Amen. What do you have? Maybe God's given you a gift to do something like with, with, a, with an excellence that nobody else can do it quite like you. God has given you a career. God has given you a talent. God has given you ability. And I'm telling you today, I'm asking you to take a look at it and make sure that it hasn't just been given to you. Because I believe it's been given to you for a purpose. Even the things that God has brought us out of. I look at some of you in here. And the things that God has brought you out of. Yes. You are thankful for what God brought you out of. And it is enough to celebrate and praise Jesus from now through all eternity just because of what he's done for you. But I want to tell you something. God's brought you through that to give you another platform. Yes. For you to give him glory for what he's done in your life. Yes. So that he can speak. And words can be released. Wes, he's a he's a remodeler, he's a contract, he's a he's a he works on houses, he, he has his own business. And Wes God's done work in your life. But he's constantly telling me about he gets this job or this job, and, and when he's in these jobs, doing these jobs, all of a sudden the subject of God will come up. And he gets to share with people what God has done for him. His work has become a platform for Jesus. Drew, I see you as captain, and you're not letting what God has done for you go without use. Because I see the fruit of what you're doing and how you've shared the word of God with others and what God has done for you. Continue to let Jesus get on your boat. Okay. And speak. I could go all over this room. Recognize talents and abilities and careers and blessings. Yes. Jimmy Glover, you've been given opportunity because of your success in the broken world. Jesus has given you that, brother, not just because you love it, but because it should be a platform in your life. I believe you're doing that. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful to the blessings of Almighty God? Yes. And if we will dare, if we will dare, to let Jesus' feet stand on those places. There is no telling how he will change the course of our life. The day before that day, Peter was thinking, man, Jesus got some words like he's very, I'm going to serve, I believe he's the Messiah. And, and man, I'm going to serve him, I'm going to bless him in my fishing fish. But little did he know Jesus was about to change his career. Hallelujah. And it didn't take long. From where they was fishing to the shore, they forsook all and followed him. All I can think of was maybe if Zebedee, James and John's daddy, was with them that day, I'm sure he was, Yo, boys, go on, I'll take care of the fish. Hallelujah. How did all these fish in to get money for <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is blessings for people everywhere he goes. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Amen. What has Jesus given in your life? Gifts, talents, abilities, possessions, have hobbies, not have hobbies. <laughs> Hallelujah. For you to share. And there's people I know they know how to hunt. And they take people hunting and they share Jesus. 
And I got a shot up old Sam Archer. Sam Archer occasionally take me fishing. And I will tell you, there's a lot of good fishermen in here. But that man knows how to catch crappie. And he'll take me on that lake and we will catch fish every time. And he blesses me with the joy of that day. But I'm going to tell you what goes on that day. We talk about Jesus all day. That boat has become another platform for Jesus. And then he not only does that, I said, he'll, he'll come home, he'll clean it up and put it in the freezer. Then he'll give the preacher a And he also, he, he'll give it to people, his neighbors. He'll give it to those going through tough times. He'll, he'll drive down the road and give it to people who are going through a tough time. Give it to fish. His boat has become a pulpit and a platform for more Jesus Christ. What have you been given? I thought I bought a boat. And I bought a platform and a pool. Amen. What do you have that can be a platform for him? Give it to Jesus. There's a reason why you've been given that thing, that ability, that talent. So what do we do? Let me sum it up for you before I end this today. Number one, provide him a platform. Let there be a place where Jesus can speak through your life. Amen? Number two, at his word, act in obedience. Do what he says to do, even if it hadn't worked before. One of these days, y'all going to be coming in here. Jesus is there. Y'all going to be coming in here. Or you're going to be pulling up looking for a parking place. You. Hallelujah. And you're going to walk through those doors and you think, man, I remember how it was back in that COVID year. <laughs> Amen. Oh, I remember we had plenty of room to sit, plenty of room to park. But one of these days, the nets are going to be full. Because we're going to keep throwing the net. Because Jesus said to do it. And we're going to not be afraid to launch out a little deeper. Out on the platform. At his word, act in obedience. Launch out a little deeper. Number three, launch out a little deeper. Don't be afraid to go deeper with God. Because there's things you can catch from him going a little deeper. Yeah. Then you can just stay in shallow crystal. Huh. There may not be, oh, should I go there? <laughs> just an example, just an example. I know some of you can't do this. There may not be the excitement and the crowd and, and everything that goes on on Wednesdays. Sometimes Wednesdays, the greatest volume of the Word yes. is the positive. Are we willing to go a little deeper? Are we willing to spend time every day in prayer? Yes. Are we willing to look into the Word every day in prayer? Go a little deeper. Number four, keep casting your net, even though nothing has happened yet. Yeah. Keep loving your family. Yeah. Keep praying for them. Keep doing. There's there's instructions that God has given me and them on certain areas of our life. Some we've seen results. Some we haven't seen full results. Some we've seen some results. But we're gonna keep doing what God has told us to do till we see the whole net 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 filled. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then number five, beckon to your friends to help bring in the miracles of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get ready. It's coming in Jesus' name. Amen. It's then, when you do those things, that you will find the true call to follow Him. And you'll be willing to forsake everything else. Lay down your net and follow Jesus. It was Peter. You know, burly, big, stinking fisher. And on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost was poured out, they began to speak with other tongues, magnify God, and the crowd gathered there outside the upper room. It was
was Peter that preached that day the gospel of Jesus Christ. 3,000 and more were saved that day, and the early church was burned. Yeah. That old fisherman that simply said, Jesus, if you need my boat, you can use it. You thought you bought a boat. Oh, that you have much more than a boat. But Jesus, step on and use it. Jesus has a way of changing what you're fishing for forever. Yeah. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord today. Search your life. See what things God has deposited in your life that can be used for the Lord. And let Jesus have. He will bless it, and you'll be blessed for it. Amen. Would you stand with this Lord? Father, we just thank you this morning. We thank you today, God, that your word is true. And that, Father, for this story, Lord, I just thank you, God, for what you did in, in Peter's life. Thank you, Lord, that God, you had a plan for Peter. And that God, he didn't know it wasn't the plan that he had. Lord, when he made room for you, when he gave place to you with what he had, oh God, you blessed him. You expanded it. You, you, you exceeded it beyond all that he could ever possibly desire. Father, you gave him the desires of his heart and then so much that, Lord, he didn't go after just the fulfillment of his career. He went after your presence just to be with you, God. That's what he wanted. Lord, I thank you for what you did in Peter, Andrew's life, and James, and John's life. I thank you, God, for just using common people like us to send the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. I thank you, Father, that you can turn in a small fishing venture into a mighty drought without you. Father, I ask you today that you just cause us to search, cause us to look in our hearts and our lives and to make available to you everything that we have. God, it may be a talent that you've given us that we say, I've been given this for some reason. What am I supposed to do with Lord? I pray that you would just put upon their heart what to do with that talent. How to use it for your glory. God, maybe that maybe they have been just anointed with a career that, that God, they can bless people with. God, let, let their careers, God, let all of our careers, God, be a, a place and a, a platform for you to speak. God, let us take you into our workplaces with us. Not to hide you in our, in our, our purse or our car, but God, to bring you in with us. Let our light shine before men that they might see our good works. Glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Lord, we thank you today. God, maybe it's land you've given us. God, let us use it when everybody, anybody comes on that land or to our house, that we would use our house, our land, as a platform for you to speak. Whatever it is, God, I pray that you put it on our hearts and that God would give motion to you. Say, Lord, take it. It's yours. Father, I thank you for the blessings of the call that are coming to your people this morning. And I thank you, Father God, for the result you're going to bring in Jesus' name. Now, I'm not going to have you come down this morning, but I, I want to first ask you while every head bowed and eye closed, just out of respect to everyone that's here. I talk to you that are online as well, because there's nothing more important than this right here. The fact is, Jesus is a soon coming king. The Bible is true, and one day soon the trumpet will blast. The Bible says the dead in Christ will rise first. We which alive or alive remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. And that's for believers, those who have made Jesus the Lord of our life. If you're here today or listening to us online, and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you've never asked Him to come into your heart, or if you have walked with the Lord, but you are not walking in fellowship with Him, 
You've allowed things to come in between you and him. And you need to make some things right and get it under the blood. Anybody standing before me or online right now, and you say, I need to make things right with God, would you pray for me right where I'm at this morning? Would you go on look around? Just lift your hand right now and say, that's me. Pray for me. That's me. Pray for me. Hallelujah. 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 Who else? Yes, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for giving us this year. Hallelujah. For you that are watching online, we're going to pray in just a moment. And I'm believing that God has touched some of your hearts and you're going to give Jesus that place in your life today. Make him Lord of your life. For you that are walking with him and you know you've just slipped and you want to make things right, we'll put it under the blood this morning. Can we all pray together this morning and make that commitment to the Lord? Say this out loud with me. You that are watching and you that are here, say this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you knowing who you are. Jesus, you are the Son of God. And the miracles you did back then, you are still doing today. I ask you to do a miracle in me. Forgive me where I failed you. Cleanse me. Wash me by your blood. Cleanse me and make me new. Lord, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord and that you are raised from the dead. So I receive by faith right now your power and your cleansing into my life. Lord, I will serve you from this day forth all the days of my life to the best of my life. Thank you, Lord, for your help and your renewal today. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, Lord, just thank you. Hallelujah. Just thank you right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Now, one more thing. One more thing. Still bow your head. You don't mind. Talking to you here. How many of you here would say, you know what, Pastor? As that word was coming forth today, I realized that I had not made everything available to God. And I want to make a commitment to God in His house before Him this morning. And I want to say to the Lord, Lord, I've heard Your Word. And I purpose in my heart that if it's mine, it's Yours. And I make everything available to Him this morning. And I say that to God in heaven. If that's you, put your hands to the Lord right now. Yes, God, you see that here. All of them. Thank you, Father God, for the purposes that are established in hearts today. Thank you so much. Father, I thank you that you receive the cry of these hearts. You receive the purpose of these hearts. And I thank you, Father God, for those things that you're going to speak in the days to come. I thank you there's new directions to be heard. There's new decisions to be made. And I thank you, Father God, that what we thought we had for some reason may very well turn into something else. Because, Lord, your hand and your revelation brings it out. Now, Lord, we thank you we give it to you today. Would y'all just pray this out loud? Say, Father, we thank you for your presence here today. Thank you for the word of God. Say this, I will say, like they did in Capernaum, what a word for you have spoken today. And I receive it. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I'm so glad you're in church today. How many of y'all glad you came to hear the Word of God? Well, I just get blessed on you when you go in the presence of the Lord. Say this with me. Say, I am empowered by the Word, anointed by the Holy Ghost, covered in the blood. I am a child of God, and God goes before me this week, watching over me, just waiting. To bless me with things that I don't know about. In Jesus' name. God bless y'all. Go with the Lord and the great We will see y'all on Wednesday. 6.30 for the